This is April 30th. Uh, dirt to dry. We had that tremendous amount of wind, 40 mile plus winds for over 30 some hours. And this end here where it had to conceal that, I showed you yesterday when we plowed it up, it plowed up wet. Well, it's pretty dry right now. And so we're going to disc it up because you can't plant on, the, on a seed bed like this. Uh, it, it, the planter just would be hopping all over the ground. So I want to show you what I'm talking about. You see how rough that surface is. Well, you can't run a planter on that. You either run a collivator on it, or I call it a disc, but <laughs> modern day white man call it a disc harrow. And I don't quite understand that. A harrow is a harrow. A disc is a disc in my way of thinking. But you see all these big clods. This is where it plowed up wet yesterday, but it's dry now because of the wind. So we're going to get to, uh, we've got to turn this. We gotta get rid of that big clumpy stuff. Doesn't have to be baby butt smooth, but it's gotta be a lot uh, closer than that. And like I said, the reason we turned this under was to bury the lime at six inches deep. And uh, so we'll get the tractor running and uh, get to turning this over. I'd like to get it planted either tomorrow or uh, Saturday for sure. Let's make this wood disc really nice is you can change the pitch on it by pulling these pins. Now, I don't got it really aggressive because I don't need it aggressive right now because I'm not tearing up a uh, hard pan. I'm just wanting to level with it and at that rate right there it'll go over pretty fast and you could take that and make that disc straight or you can make it more aggressive. But uh, we got it medium right now. And like I say, the nice thing about is, is you pull this pin out and you can pull that, up, make it more aggressive or make it less. So that's a nice thing about some technology. Now you can see firsthand, I'll take you out here, you can see firsthand, just hit that with the disc and it broke that slabs up real quick. I'll show you. Okay, see the stuff on the on the right, how clumpy it is? All you gotta do a couple times over there with the disc, and that's plantable there. It, uh, but like I said, you can't plant and that rough but once we run the disc over this field it'll all have a surface like that and then once we get that done then we'll add the fertilizer and then uh, should be ready for seed we're going to plant corn in here and i don't have the luxury of having anhydrous put on here that's too hard to get the tanks up here so i have to go old school with granular fertilizer. I like to go with liquid fertilizer, but uh, if the planter I got doesn't, but I say, can't plant that. This, after drying for 24 hours, is ready to rock and roll. A lot smoother. Remember how that was all slapped up? With that concealer one?
May 1st, 2020. Uh, I want to show you the expense. It's far cry from a poor man, but I see a lot of poor men driving $60,000 pickups and pulling $15,000 side by sides around and <laughs> buying $4,000 fiberglass kibos stick out in a field and uh, call themselves poor men. Anyhow, I just want to go over this for you. You're going to have price of fuel, fertilizer, the corn, two bags of seed corn up there was $500. The fertilizer was around $600. Triple 13 and with no output and uh, anhydrous on and going with the uh, a real 46% nitrogen but that all has a price you're looking at like I said you're looking at over a thousand dollars in that but yet again I see people scribble on their self with <laughs> tattoos I guess this advertisement look at me and this is going to go in the ground and the corn will absorb it and maybe a deer will feed off of it but it's a far cry from this society that wants to tout poor man. And when I see those on the video, it looks like all they grew was a patch of weeds. Before you all go off on a rant, well, if I had your money, if you worked as hard as I did, you wouldn't have my money anyway because you wouldn't work that hard. Because I get up at the crack of dawn and I'll go until the sun sets and I'll work my ass off. And I've done that for over 50 years now. So I don't want to hear about if I had your money, I'd do that. Because you wouldn't do it anyway. You'd just throw it away on earrings and uh, tattoos, and frivolous uh, wheels on a truck that cost $2,000 a wheel, $8,000. I bought a pickup, didn't, a new pickup didn't cost $8,000. Uh, anyhow, that's enough of the rant. You're going to do food plots, it's going to cost you money. Corn is the most expensive item to plant. That's what I want to get across. That, you can plant soybeans cheaper, but when you're going to go plant uh, field corn, and you're you're going to have to take some money to the co-op. Well, we're spreading that on with the, the spreader, and uh, wind's pretty strong today. Well, you definitely want to have a respirator, eye goggles, uh, respirator, eye goggles. Rubber gloves, long sleeve shirt, and I got my car hard done because that nitrogen, that granule fertilizer, you get it in your eye, and you're gonna feel like you got a forest fire going in there, and you don't need to be breathing that dust. So use some common sense and put some clothes on. And I know those people, I won't wear a, a friggin' mask even when they walk into Walmart. Well, they're part of the problem in this country today because they think they're so independent, but then they want to blame everything on the government when they screw up. So, anyway, this, this long sleeve, rubber gloves, handle and dry fertilizer, or any farm chemicals is a must. Right there, plant food. 46000 nitrogen. That's to take the place of the ammonia that I don't have injected into the land. Well, here it is, uh, Friday, first day of May. Now we've got that fertilizer on, and here's what it looks like. You can see the urea, the triple 13 is hard to see because it's the same color as that dirt. But that area really shows up. Now you can't leave that on top of the dirt like that because if you had a rain, it's going to wash off. You have to, what you have to do is just from here where the white specks are over to here where it's incorporated. And we're disking that down about almost three inches. So we're wanting to get it down in there where the corn seed will be with it. Uh, 
The reason I have to do it this way is my planter doesn't have a fertilizer box on it and um, I don't have liquid fertilizer. So you can't leave, as you see this field roughed up with the tire tracks from spreading that. And like I said, you can see that, that 4600 on there. Now part of that is filler, remember that, because it's not all fertilizer. But anyhow, you have to run the disc over to get your fertilizer incorporated down toward the root system. And like I said, <laughs> it's another windy day, bad day for video. Well, it's a perfect morning for planting. Sort of overcast skies that makes fall on the row, marker row, that much better. Yeah, we got the field worked up, we got the corn ready to go. It's always a stressful time planting because you things can go wrong, but that's just part of the game. You got to be ready and prepared for things that might happen, just like this guy. How would you like to have the weight of the world <laughs> on your shoulders? No matter whatever you say, uh, you got people interpreting it to uh, make him look wrong and America to look wrong. That, uh, those people uh, you can never satisfy. Same way with this food plotting thing. I ain't saying this is the right way. I'm just saying it just the way I run my little world right there. So we got the 7,000 John Deere planter. Uh, those planters, you can pick them up at auctions or, you know, they're that's a four row. Um, and it's ready to rock and roll. You notice the seed beds worked up from the time we plowed it to disking it and now when we take off we shouldn't have any problems and should have a uniform depth on the seed. So let's get to planting. Let's put some seed to the ground. Now you can see the results of that smooth seed bed and uh, we'll check here and see if the corn's coming out. Yep, there it is. Just seen it. So the corn's coming out. And this furrow, this marker roll, if you have GPS unit, you don't need that. But that's what that marker is all about. And it falls down, and then uh, you can see it on the path. We'll take you along for a ride. And what we want to do, see that crack on the hood? You see that marker roll? That's what we put the center of the tractor right on that, on that line. Now, when we drop this marker, and when we drop this marker, that automatically the next time I raise that and lower it, the next, that one will drop. So it changes every time you pick the mower or the planter up and it rotates on its own. So we'll follow along here. We'll keep that center line right on the, right on the marker roll.
there's a good straight road. With the herbicide application, it's not in, that as important as it was when you used to cultivate. Because if you had crooked roads, then you'd be taking out some of your road crops. it oscillates. Well, that right hand marker will drop. That's pretty cool how that does that. So, anyhow, we'll back down the field. And that's how planting works with the 7,000 John Deere planter. There's four boxes on there, and as you've seen, all four of them are right at the same stage of emptiness. So we got to go up and get some more seed. And you don't want to waste that seed. That seed's around $250 a bag. But uh, we'll go up and get some more. Yeah, there's a lot of stress when you open those lids up. Now they have a monitor for that planter, but I've never hooked it up because I've always, you know, uh, it's always worked, but uh, they do have an electronic monitor that you can put in the cab and wire it up. And that would alleviate that apprehension when you go <laughs> pull the lids off. But boy, I'll tell you, it, it's working great. And we got a good cloudy sky and that uh, marker roll shows up real good on, a, on a early morning or late evening. It's really hell to see that marker roll because uh, the sun's glaring right through that windshield. So, beautiful day to plant. The nice thing, the nice measuring cup, big measuring cup, you dump the same amount into each seed hopper. That way I don't have to, I can get it out of the hoppers after I do it, but this way, if it uses it all up, then it saves me cleaning them out. So, measuring cup comes in pretty handy. That's the cob corn. At, uh, there's the numbers on it. And each area is going to have a, there's 80,000 kernels in that bag. And each area that you live in is going to have a specific seed for your area. So if you've got a good agronomist at your co-op, 
he'll recommend the seed and that's Roundup ready so that's herbicide you can spray it there's lots of seeds out there but my co-op goes with that particular brand well we're done planting so we went through a bag and a half of corn now we gotta take these corn boxes off and put the bean boxes on that junk made in China tripod busted for the last time and uh, I don't know when America is going to go back to John Deere, Ford tractor, stuff like that made in the United States. Anyhow, you just unbuckle this box, this feed hopper, and lift it up and it comes right off. Pretty simple. Now the one on your left is the bean box. That has a different meter metering wheel in it for the size of the beans and it'll disperse the beans out at a different rate than what the corn does. Corn's bigger than the beans and it doesn't come out as fast. So you have to switch those and if you don't switch them you can't plant beans with with the corn metering box. So you have to go and luckily I got four bean boxes all I have to do is switch them out. These go on pretty simple. They so just go up in here and then they lock in there two bolts. You bring it back down. Get it down, engage the drive, that little lock back here that you secure the back of it, and it's locked in place, ready to plant. Different metering a wheel in there. Yeah, here's what I'm talking about. These are what they're called seed hopper plates. This is for corn, and this is for, this seed hopper plate here is for beans. So I don't have to switch them out, take them off and all that. I got to do is switch the boxes. They got one for Milo. They have one for several different seeds. And this is the unit that you got to change so you get a different population. Population of corn is going to be the difference in beans. I, so you have to change them out when you're going to plant beans. Well, that'll cost you right there. There's a dead mouse in that box. Getting in a hurry trying to do stuff. Now that mouse was down in that box farther it would plug out the seed and I didn't check it until just now and so I you can get in a hurry sometimes and luckily I didn't put the you know of course I'd have seen it when I put the seed in it but if it, I gotta make sure that the this hoppers are open because if there was one of them down in there then the seed wouldn't go out so slow down I guess another important thing you want to add a somewhat about a tablespoon of graphite into each one of these boxes. That way it uh, will lubricate them, dry lubrication on them. Because, well, they recommend it. And that's about a tablespoon full. So you just dump it right down in there. It, uh, and you're good to go. But you want to have some graphite if you're going to have a planter because that'll make the seed slide down through there easier. A tip for you guys. You see that rust in there? That brown, that rust. There's some 4600 in there. It hasn't been 24 hours. And you can see the rust on the spinners. So what I'm getting at, it, no matter, uh, that just sat up, I put that on 24 hours ago and here it is, sat out overnight and rust is forming on it. So make sure when you use your spreaders and you're putting manual fertilizer on, you get that washed off immediately. Don't be a dumbass like me and uh, leave it on there. I can't believe it did that in just that short period of time, but I'll put some graphite in there and loosen it up. Yeah, this small area in here is probably, oh, it can't be much more than, than three quarters of an acre down through here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to keep taking the 38 inch planter and moving it over and drilling the beans in. And hopefully 
they'll do better. You can see it's on a hill. I broadcast them on there. I don't have very good luck. It washes them it off. So this way they'll be down in the ground. And uh, ground temperature is warm and hopefully they'll germinate. I'm just going to keep moving over, no row spacing, just everywhere the planter can run I'm going to put some seed in the ground, some beans. And my idea behind that is I'll come back in there this fall and possibly, put, well I will come back and put some uh, pure traction in there. The beans will put nitrogen in the soil and then I'll just rotate them out because what will probably happen is the beans probably get cropped off by browsing of the deer. And if that happens, that's a good thing because it's a summertime food source. And then I'll just tear it up in August and uh, uh, go in there and plant an annual, like I say, pure attraction in that area. So that's my idea. So that's, like I say, that right there sums it up. Non-typical way of doing things. Basically, I'm just pulling down a planter roll right there instead of the marker roll. And so that's putting them, I'm splitting that row in two. So it goes 38, that'll put it real close. Uh, half of 38 would be about uh, um, 14, 14, 36. Anyhow, that's how I'm doing it. Well, we got it seeded. We got the beans in, the corn in, and um, beans are in this area right in here. It slopes off, and I put quite a few population in there, more than what, because some of them probably won't germinate. <laughs> but uh, corn's up there on the high ground. The dirt, you can see how it tilled up, proper tillage. Like I say, some people say it's just deer food, and I gotta go along with that. It's winter supplementary. And uh, now it's up to Mother Nature. Uh, I did what I could do, and uh, did it proudly. And hope to do the best. The same way what this man is trying to do is sow the seeds to make America great again or a ship off course, an undisciplined country. And the father come home and he pulled the belt off around his waist and started whipping ass. People resent that today because we become weak. Well, whatever. But if you're gonna do food plots and you're gonna get back to nature, you're gonna have to be the motivator of your own destiny and you're gonna have to get off your ass and put the money and the effort forward. But that's it from the non-typical. Now all we can do is play the hand with Mother Nature deals us.